Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to easily design and animate cover art using Adobe After Effects. Shout out to the musical artist Sagala, whose cover art we'll be replicating today. I absolutely love his work, so I'll link his music in the description below, along where you can find today's assets. Now it's time to jump into After Effects. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create our composition, and I want this to be a vertical composition as if we're seeing it on Instagram stories or something like that. So I'm gonna click new composition here, and then I'm going to change the specs to 1080 by 1920. We will label this working comp. We'll leave the duration in eight seconds and the background color doesn't matter. So we'll click okay. I'm gonna bring this into my working folder. I'm going to duplicate this now and label this render comp and bring this into my render folder. This is just my workflow and this is what I prefer to use. I'm gonna double click on my render comp folder and I'm going to drag our working comp in there and we'll close out for now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is bring in our assets. So what I'm gonna do is drop down here and we have a bunch of them. I'm gonna bring in our bridge cutout, shrink this down because this is pretty large as you can tell. And if I wanna have a really accurate framing when creating this whole design, I'm gonna to go to here and put in proportional grid. And I have this rule of thirds grid uh, by default, which if you don't know how to set up, you'll go to edit uh, preferences, then you go to grids and guides, change horizontal and vertical to three, make the color whatever you want. That's how you get these grid lines up but I'm using this because this is a really good tool for me to use to just really eye up my design and be really specific uh, on where I want things to be placed. So I like where that's there. Next thing I'm gonna do is bring in our orange cutout. So I'll bring this here. This is really large. Now we're gonna be rotating this orange. So I wanna make sure that everything rotates exactly around the middle. And right now our anchor point is slightly below the where the center of this orange is. So I'm gonna click Y to move my anchor point right there to the middle. That way, when I rotate it, it all rotates from the center of that point. And I'm gonna bring this below our bridge and we're gonna put the middle like right here. Next thing I need to do is bring in our clouds. So we have our clouds video layer and this video is large. So I'm just gonna bring this down here and bring it up. Okay, it's looking good. Next thing I wanna do is bring in our branch. And so I didn't crop this out in Photoshop. I have a plugin that I like to use by Red Giant, it's called Unmolt. Um, it's really easy. I could just add it right here and click invert and right away it takes out the white or it'll take out the black, whatever you're trying to remove. And if you don't have this plugin, I will link another tutorial I have to show you how to properly mask things out of Photoshop. So I have this branch now and I'm going to move the anchor point right here because we're gonna be doing some subtle rotation as well. We wanna make sure it's animating from the end of the branch. We're gonna be playing around with a lot of the placement and sizing of these branches. So I'm not gonna to try to make them perfect right now. We'll duplicate this, transform, flip horizontal. All right, next thing we need to do is actually uh, write out our text and so and the actual cover art, it's more of like a cursive script, which looks really cool. I'm just gonna put my own spin on it though and just write out Sagala's name with this Dharma Gothic C. It's, this is a free Adobe font, so you could find this online and use this yourself if you wanna use the same font. So this is our design and it's looking really cool. The next thing we need to do is actually put our assets in 3D space and create some <laughs> separation and some depth as we get into animating this. And if that doesn't make sense, just stick with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Go to layer, new, camera. We'll leave all the default settings the same. And I'm gonna go to layer, new, null. We will label this camera controller. And now we're going to click on, on all of our objects here and we're going to make them 3D. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is go to two view. And right now it's looking from the top. So it's looking from the camera's perspective, which is right here and this is what the camera's facing, and then we have all of our objects on the same plane. But what we need to do is back them up and rescale them to proportion. That way we'll have depth when we're moving our digital camera. So the thing that's gonna be furthest in this example is gonna be the clouds. So I'm gonna push this back, let's say 20,000 pixels. Now it's really small, and you can barely see it on our active camera, and then up here, you can't even see it. But no, you can. And I'm going to scale this up to my liking right here. Now it's back to the way it was. Now with our orange, I'm gonna push that back, let's say 10,000 pixels. All right, same thing. 
it went back in Z space right there. And I'm just going to scale this up some more as well. All right, now with our left branch, I'm gonna push this back, let's say 1000. With this right branch, I'm gonna push this back 5000. And then with our text, I'm gonna push this back to 7000. So now I need to resize everything back up and bring it back to where it needs to be. And we don't need this window anymore. I was just wanting to give you guys a visualization of kind of how far we're, we were pushing things behind. So I'm gonna go back to one view here, fit the screen, and we are going to put things back where they belong. So we set up our design, we put things in 3D space. Now it's time for the fun stuff, animating. So let me show you what we're gonna to do today. So what we're gonna do is make some quick snappy motions and then we're going to make this loop. But we're gonna only focus on our snappy motions and animations now. We will do the looping later. So I'm gonna start with our orange here. I'm just gonna solo this and I'm going to set a keyframe for our orientation, go to about three seconds. And I'm gonna change this value here to 90 degrees. So here's how this looks, all right. Kind of boring, but here's how we spice it up. I'm gonna click on both of these keyframes, highlight them, click F9 to easy ease. Now I'm gonna click on both of our keyframes again, go to our graph editor, highlight both of our handles here, and I'm going to drag our handles in all the way. So now what this is doing is starting off really slow, it's gonna spike, and then it's going to ramp off again. So here's how this animation is gonna look. And this is the same type of animation that we're gonna be doing for all of our assets. So to save myself time, and uh, instead of replicating that entire process every time, I'm going to click on our keyframes here. I'm gonna to go to Ease Copy, and it's copying the values from the graph editor. So that way, whenever we do any other animations, I could simply paste the same type of values, and it just makes it that much faster for me. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is animate our branches. And I have this really cool plugin called Autofill, where basically it sets a start point where you can create an animation that brings your asset or whatever it is onto screen. So just break it down really simply. I'll go down to autofill here. We'll solo this. From default, it just creates a point right in the middle and everything just starts to spread out and grow from that, which is really cool for something like plants, right? The really cool thing about this effect here is that we have the starting point and we can move this wherever. Now this does take a lot of uh, energy out of your machine, which is why I'm on a pretty low render mode, just so we could preview it a little bit faster for the tutorial. But you'll see here that things start to sprout out. Now you could also change the speed so for this tutorial, I'm gonna make things to 25. And see, you see right away, things grow a lot faster. Now what I'm gonna do is unsolo that here, and I'm going to turn off preview input. That way, it, we're gonna see it as it grows on. And we're going to copy this effect and paste it onto our right branch. So I like the way this is looking, but we don't have to start from scratch with, with this effect. I would kinda of like actually wanna start it with the effect already in motion. So I'm gonna start our left branch where it's already halfway there. And we're going to move this over here to the side. So then it comes in like that. And then with our right branch, I'm gonna start this pretty complete too. And I'm gonna bring this up here up top. Awesome, now what I wanna do is actually do some subtle rotation within the branches itself. And there's a few ways to do this. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm gonna just use our orientation and rotation tool. I'm gonna go up to one and a half seconds, bring this down. Go to three seconds. All right, so we have our branches and our orange animating. Now we need to animate our clouds. So let's solo these and we're gonna do, we're just gonna animate the time here. So I'm gonna right click, time, enable time remapping. So we have the starting keyframe here. We're gonna drag down our clip and we're going to bring this keyframe all the way in. Now what I'm gonna do is bring up our orange animation and say, hey, this lines up at three seconds. I'm gonna line this up at three seconds as well. And then I'm going to paste our keyframe animation from before. That way it aligns perfectly with that snappy motion. So when we look at the sky and the orange together, it snaps at the same time, just like that. Looks really cool. So now that that's done, we're going to go to our text, the last thing we need to animate here. So I'm going to drop down our text animator here and add a few different things. First, I'm going to add a position. And I'm gonna just make this really slight. So I'm just gonna bring it maybe down to like, say, like 30. I'm going to add another property, the opacity. I'm gonna change that to zero. Now from here, I'm going to add a property and add a blur within this. And I'm going to make this, let's say 20 to start. Right? So we can't see anything. That's because we actually need to animate a range selector. So I have my start point here. I'm gonna set that point here. And then I'm gonna to go to, let's say, one and a half seconds and bring it up to 100. 
highlight both of these, and we're going to paste the same keyframe values as from before. So now here's what we have. So now that we have animating assets, the next thing we need to do is actually animate our digital camera. I'm going to make our camera controller 3D. I'm going to parent our camera to our camera controller. Click P for position. Go into three seconds here. And I'm going to bring this value up and zoom in. And right away you can see the depth with that first branch compared to that second branch in the orange. It looks really cool. And once again, we're going to just paste in those values like we did earlier. So now animates in just like that. I have a really cool bonus tip to show you guys. So in our camera, we actually have camera options and we can enable depth of field. When you work with depth of field turned on, it slows down your entire workflow process just because it takes longer for your computer to render. So I wait to do this until the end, just like adding motion blur. So I'm gonna enable depth of field here and on a normal camera, the lower the aperture, the shallower depth of field you have. Well, in After Effects, it's backwards. So I'm gonna just bring this number up to let's say 150 and things are gonna start to look blurry. Well. I can highlight our camera in a layer, let's say our text, and have them both highlighted and go to layer, camera, link focus distance to layer. So now, no matter where the camera's animating, the text will always be in focus. Now, if I wanna just really exaggerate it just so you guys can see better, we're gonna have the text in focus this entire time. Uh, give everything motion blur. Now we're gonna jump into our render comp here. Right away, it's going a little slow. I'm just gonna drop down our quality here so we can see, but it animates in. So we have this black space here between the bridge and the clouds, and that's just because we were animating the camera. So to fix that, I'm just gonna jump in here, back into our working comp. And I'm just gonna make our clouds just a little bit larger. Works out perfectly. Now in order to loop this, this is really simple. We're going to duplicate our working comp. We're going to right click, time, time reverse layer, and then right away, we can see what this looks like. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.